Gita Gopana, thank you so much for joining us. Welcome to the Daily Social Distancing Show. Thank you, Trevor. I'm just happy that you want to talk to an economist. <laughs> I think economists are, are some of the people we need to speak to the most right now because um, money is going to be the second biggest loser, I guess, in, in coronavirus. Obviously, human life comes first, and then you have money, which people need to sustain themselves and survive. As the IMF, you lend money to countries, which means you can learn a lot about what countries are going through and what they need. What have you garnered, you know, from, from your insights into what countries need right now? So the first thing I just want to flag, uh, Trevor, is that we've had over 90 countries uh, come to us to discuss financial assistance. And so this is unprecedented. It hasn't happened before. So it tells you the scale of the crisis that we're dealing with. Uh, and I think what we need to keep in mind is this crisis is very different from any others we've seen, you know, the Great Depression, the Great Recession, which is the global financial crisis. And now this is the great lockdown that we're living through. So, it, so firstly, the shock is so unique. I mean, like you said, this is a human tragedy first. It's mm -hmm. a health crisis. So this is not something that we're used to. Second, in terms of helping countries and telling them to think about what comes next, there's so much uncertainty because economic policy is not going to be able to determine the spread of the virus or how intense it's going to be or how many deaths there will be. All of that mm -hmm. comes from public health and science. And the third factor is that while in the past, if you lent a country money and you told them to spend it, uh, that would stimulate activity. But this time around, we actually don't want people to go out and spend. We want them to stay at home. So this is about maintaining their economic system so that when this disease is under control, uh, you can see a faster recovery. I know this may sound like a really stupid question, but is there a point where money just runs out? If, if very few people are working, if everything is shut down, if nobody is moving money around, earning money, spending money, is there a point where governments say we don't have, or what, what happens at that point? What is the tipping point that as an economist you worried about? So this is a, a crisis where given the scale of spending that we're seeing, we're going to see countries running very large fiscal deficits with their debts to GDP going up quite uh -huh. substantially, with central banks putting in a lot of stimulus. Now, now, in theory, central banks can always put in as much stimulus as they want to. But with that said, there are limits to what they can also do. But this is a real challenge that countries are grappling with. And by that said, you have to think about the counterfactual, which is if you don't do what you're doing now, yeah. you could actually end up in a worse situation because the economic activity would collapse so severely that your debt to GDP would be even worse, right? So, so things could be worse if you didn't do what was needed right now. And I think that is something everybody recognizes at this point. Some people have argued that the economy could be put into a coma right now and it, it's not in effect dead because unlike the Great Depression and unlike the recession, as you said, there isn't, you know, a, a, a real underlying cause in the same way. It's not, you know, it's not a, a loophole in the market that's causing something or it's not a failure in real estate that's happened. It's, an, it's, a, it's a strange thing that's affected the entire market. And some argue that that means we can experience a huge jump afterwards where everything goes back to normal. Can that happen? And if so, how long would it take for that to happen? Uh, great question, Trevor. I, so to answer the question of what comes next, I think besides economists and policymakers, it's going to depend a lot on what health experts tell us, right? Because it's not going to be possible to bring the economy back up to 100% if we don't get this particular virus under, uh, under containment. So there's that huge piece that's there. Now, it is true that if all of this levels out and you're seeing some hopeful signs in some countries and you see some leveling off, then you can see a scenario where, you know, activity resumes going forward. So in fact, our uh, projection is that 2021 will be one of uh, recovery. But uh, there's so much uncertainty at this point. If this if their containment measures work, and this is not a very prolonged period, if people can get back to work much more quickly, then we can think about a, a rebound coming, uh, you know, and policies that have been put in place, if they're effective, then we can see a rebound happening. So before I let you go, we, we, we're obviously talking about the economics of, of a, a health crisis that has affected every aspect of human life. Policymakers, as you've said many times, are going to be instrumental in deciding 
how governments respond and how nations are in fact going to be affected and how their people are affected. What is the advice you've given to leaders out there in how they figure out what to do with their economies? So the first thing we've, uh, first advice we've given is that when it comes to matter of health, do whatever it takes, right? Do the spending that's needed to protect people's lives, to protect medical professionals, first responders, because that is the number one thing that countries need to care about at this time. Secondly, it is very important to make sure that people who are losing jobs have, have, can maintain a basic lifestyle so that they have the income to be able to uh, feed themselves, to take care of their health. You know, basic services have to be provided to them. And it's very important to make sure that firms and small and medium enterprises have the resources that are needed so that they can stay alive so that once we pass this phase, we can see a recovery happening much faster. Well, I hope they take your advice. Thank you so much for taking your time to explain some of this to us. And uh, I hope that you're right, and I hope it happens sooner than later. <laughs>